Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of trigonometry. Forgive the uh, hand-drawn graph here, but uh, well, that's all I could come up with. So determine an equation for the following sinusoidal curve. And we have this sinusoidal curve. So, when determining the equation for a sinusoidal curve, there are going to be four important aspects for us to look for. The four important aspects Aspects. There we go. First one is referred to as the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the midline to a maximum or a minimum. Distance from midline to maximum or minimum. So that'll be a vertical distance. If I'm going to talk about the midline, I should probably define it. The midline is the line that runs exactly halfway in between a maximum and minimum value. So this is the horizontal line. Halfway between a maximum and minimum. Groovy. So we got these two things. In addition, we've also got the period, which will be the horizontal distance distance from a maximum to a maximum or a minimum to a minimum. It's not the only way that we have to calculate it, but graphically speaking, it's the easiest way. And finally, we also have the phase shift, which is our starting point. This is also referred to as a horizontal shift. Now, we do have the freedom to pick whatever starting point we want, but depending on what kind of curve we want, if we want a sine curve, we're going to want to start at a point that is directly on the midline. But if we want to use a cosine curve, we would start at a local maximum or a local minimum. Now, both of these can be determined by the following equation. So I, it'll either look like y equals a times the sine of omega x minus phi plus b, or let's change that sine to a cosine a times the cosine of omega x minus phi plus b. Now there are four constants to calculate. Coincidentally there are four things to calculate from the graph itself. These four quantities are going to relate to the four quantities that we see in either of these equations. So the amplitude is going to impact the value of a, the midline impacts the value of b, and the period impacts the value of omega, and the phase shift is going to impact the value of phi. So, let's go ahead and break out a new piece of paper and start to work on this. Uh, let's, uh, let's think conservationally. Let's just use the back of this page. All right, so let's get to work on this. First thing I want to do is grab the graph itself and see if we can break down a couple of aspects of the graph. So first thing I'd like to calculate is both the uh, midline and the amplitude. So let's start with the midline. The midline is going to be exactly halfway in between a maximum value, which is 6, and a minimum value, which is 2. So the midline is exactly halfway in between a maximum and a minimum. Halfway in between means take their mean. I think that kind of rhymed. Ooh, I like that. Now. I've had students tell me, well, the midline is 2, and I say, well, that's mostly right. The midline is an actual line, so it's got to be the equation of a line, and the equation of the line is y equals 2. Now, the way that that would look on the graph is that this midline would be exactly halfway in between a maximum and a minimum. You see that I already indicated 2 on the graph here, so the line y equals 2 is going to be exactly halfway in between. So now an amplitude is going to be the vertical distance in between 
the midline and a maximum or the midline and a minimum. Now to calculate the distance between two things we would uh, subtract. So the amplitude you can either calculate as 6 minus 2 for the maximum minus the midline or we can calculate it as 2 minus negative 2 which would be midline minus minimum. Now if you ever get a negative value for either one of those chances are pretty good you just reverse the order. Take the absolute value of whatever you get and you got yourself the amplitude. So now we've got the midline and we've got the amplitude from here we get to select a starting point. So we're actually going to do this two different ways. I'd like to try using a starting point for a cosine graph and then one for a sine graph. Let's start with the cosine graph. I'm going to use this point right here as my starting point and we'll refer to this as starting point A because we're going to do this two different ways. So for starting point A your starting point allows you to calculate a couple things. First off, you can calculate the phase shift which is the x-coordinate for the starting point. And I wish I could zoom in on this graph. I figured out a remarkable way to zoom in. Zzzz. Yeah, that sort of worked. Okay, so starting point A. You'll notice on the graph that I've indicated where pi is and then in between 0 and pi I've split this up into six equal regions. So that means that the distance between any two consecutive tick marks on here is exactly pi over 6. Our starting point is at one tick mark in. Therefore, your starting point is going to be at x equals pi over 6. Now according to the formula that we know so well, this is equal to phi over omega. Unfortunately, we still need to calculate omega in order to figure out what phi is, so we're going to need the period. And the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. Solving this for omega, we would get omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. The period we can get from the graph. The period is the horizontal distance between a maximum and a maximum. So this guy right here is your period. Now counting all the tick marks, this was 1 pi over 6. So count with me, that'll be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 6, 7, 8, 9 pi over 6. So again, to calculate the distance between things is to take their difference. So the period's going to be 9 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. By counting up by pi over 6 at a time, this does two things for us. One, it allows us to already establish a common denominator, and two, it makes the subtraction a lot easier. Go ahead and refer to that as 4 pi over 3. So, plugging that back into this formula right here, we can calculate our value for omega. Omega is now going to be equal to 2 pi over the period, which is 4 pi over 3. Dividing by a fraction is the same as saying let's multiply by the reciprocal. We'll express 2 pi as 2 pi over 1. Canceling out the 2 pi's will give us 3 halves. So that is our value for omega. Now let's head back to the phase shift and see if we can calculate the value of phi. Now we just said a second ago that phi over omega is equal to pi over 6. That also tells me that phi is equal to pi over 6 times omega. But we just calculated that omega is 3 halves, so this will be pi over 6 times 3 halves. Simplifying that, we get pi over 4. 3 over 6 reduces down to 1 over 2. 2 times 2 in the denominator gives us that 4. So we have phi is pi over 4, omega is 3 halves. We have that the amplitude is 4 and that the midline is 2. If we put all of these aspects together, we can get our equation. Now this was all based on using a starting point of A. A is a local maximum. So starting point was a local max. I just realized I'm off camera. Oops. Starting point 
is a maximum. That tells us two things. For one, the graph is a cosine. And for two, it tells us that the value of a is going to be positive. Anytime we start at a maximum or a minimum, it's going to be a cosine graph. Starting at a maximum means a positive value for a. Starting at a minimum means a negative value for a. So putting all of these aspects together, we've got y equals, we said this is going to be a times the cosine, amplitude is 4, so that'll be 4 times the cosine of omega x minus phi plus the midline. Our final answer for this graph is right here. I did, however, say I want to try this again using a starting point that is in the middle so that we can see how this works with a sign. The good news is we've already done the majority of work for this. The only things that are going to change are what type of graph we're going to use, which will be a sign instead of a cosine. The period will be the same. The midline will be the same. Let's write those down. So the period is still going to be equal to 4 pi over 3 which means that omega is still going to be 3 halves. The midline is still y equals 2. The amplitude is still going to be equal to 4. The only thing that's going to change now is our starting point. Since we're choosing a sign, we're going to start at the midline. Now, a point that I see on the midline, if we were to select this starting point, we could use a sine graph, and because it's increasing through here, we could use a positive value for a. We could also select this value for a starting point and use a negative value for a since it's decreasing through this point. Or we could select this point and use a regular old sine graph. The choice is completely up to you. So we're going to use this as starting point B. And if we zoom in, we see that this starting point is at one tick mark on the negative side. That would be negative pi over 6. So our phase shift for this one will be equal to negative pi over 6. Once again, the phase shift is equal to phi over omega. Solving once again, we'll get that phi is equal to negative pi over 6 times omega, which will be negative pi over 6 times 3 halves, which is equal to, if we simplify, negative pi over 4. This time our starting point is at the midline and increasing. Which means that we are going to be using a sine graph and that A is positive. Midline means sine, increasing means A is positive. If we were decreasing through the starting point, like say at this point right here, then we would use a negative value for A. So put it all together and we get the following. Y equals A times, we know A is positive, we know the amplitude is 4, times the sine of omega, which is 3 halves, times X, minus phi, but phi is already a negative value, so we'll make that plus pi over 4, plus the midline shift will be plus 2. So put it all together, here is our final answer. Hope that you found this informative. I found it a struggle to draw, but that's just how I roll. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon.